welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing to you our brand new interactive die shutter card. This die is so cool and it makes the cutest cards that are really easy to put together. We also have a shutter card add-on die that is a decorative add-on that makes it even more simple to create these cards. And we're going to be showing you how to create both of these in this video. So first up, me, Kelly, I'm going to go through how to put one of these shutter cards together. And then Shari is going to take it away and create two gorgeous cards. This beautiful fall themed card that just blows me away. Oh my gosh, that inside is so beautiful. And I love how she's integrated the shutter card into the scene of her card, which is so cool and then she's going to be creating a holiday themed card here which is so adorable with patterned paper and she's going to have that cute little Santa image in that window. The other great thing that you can do with shutter cards is more complicated scenes like we've created here or simpler ones where you're highlighting a sentiment on the inside of that circle. So many fun ideas. We can't wait to share these with you guys and we can't wait to see what you guys are going to create with them. So let's learn how to put one of these together. Here are all of the pieces that are included in the main shutter card die. So first up, we have the piece that cuts the card base for you that does score lines and some guide marks too. We have our shutters. We have this awesome little circle guide I'll show you how to use in a second. Our band for our card and some fun decorative pieces here. So we have this cute little camera. The base there kind of goes behind the camera so then you can see it fills in those openings. And then we have this cool little frame you can do in a different color to highlight the lens part of the camera which is so cute. We also have the words smile and hello and a cute little star that cuts a star shaped opening and a star as well both with stitching. Here is the shutter card add-on die. So what this die does is it creates your center panel piece that's on the inside of the card for you just in one pass through the die cut machine. And I'll be showing you a comparison between using this and not using this so you can see it in both ways. And it also has some other cute decorative dies there. So we have the heart that creates the stitched opening and stitched heart. And then we have another cute little camera, but this time the lens is a heart shape, which I think is so sweet. And then the words for you as well, which is really Really cute to put on the front of your shutter cards. Here is the main die in the shutter card and this creates your card base for you. It has score lines at the top and on the sides and these cool little guide marks that make placing the shutter pieces really really easy. So here's a look at what it looks like when you run that through your die cut machine and we're going to cut two of these to make the shutter card. We're also going to cut two of the shutters and that die also creates a score line at the end of both of those pieces. And then we're going to take out that little metal guide that looks like a flag and our stitched circle. The first thing we're going to work on is creating our center panel piece that goes on the inside of the card. So we're going to take one of the shutter card bases there and you'll notice there's a score line there horizontally and vertically. We are not going to cut along that score line. We're actually going to cut right at the edge of the tab. So you can see there I've put the very right edge of those tabs lined up in my paper trimmer. Then we can go ahead and run that paper trimmer and cut that off and then flip it over and do the same thing. So once again, we're not not cutting along that score line, we're actually cutting where the edge of the top and bottom tabs are. And then we're also going to be cutting off the two tab pieces. And this time we will be trimming these right along the score line at the top and the bottom. And this is going to create that center panel that is the window that we're going to look through to our surprise message. The next step is to create that window opening. And so we have two pieces that are going to help us do that. One is a circle die that has stitching on it. And the other one is this little flag piece, which isn't actually a die at all. It's a placement piece. So what you're going to do is you're going to put it in the upper right hand corner of your cardstock that you just cut. We're going to line that right up into that corner. And then that curved edge is going to line up perfectly with the curve of the circle die. This is helping you place it in the exact right place with without having to measure or do pencil lines or anything. So you're going to take that little metal piece, put it in that upper right hand corner, line your die up with the curve, hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine. And now we have a stitched opening in the perfect place. And we have another stitch circle that we can actually decorate the front of the shutter card with. Now that we have our center panel done and that circle that we're going to put on the front of the card later, we're going to take another one of these main card base pieces, but this time we're going to fold along those score lines. 
So here is a close up look and you'll see that the die has created those score lines, but also these little guide marks too. So right now we're going to make sure that we can see those guide marks and then we're going to fold along those score lines in towards the center. And I'm just going to use a bone folder there to reinforce that fold. So we're going to fold along the score line into the center and you can see the card shape start to form. Then we're going to take those tabs at the top and the bottom and we're also going to fold in towards the center and reinforce those with the bone folder. So we've got four score lines folded and we're making sure that we're looking at those cool little guide marks because those are going to be perfect placements for our shutter pieces. Next, we're going to take those shutter pieces and we're going to fold along the score line the die created for us on those as well. So we're going to fold right along that and then use our bone folder just to reinforce that fold. And we'll do that on both of the pieces. The tab that we just folded on those shutter pieces is going to line up perfectly with those guide marks. So I'm going to bring out the die because it's a little bit easier to see than the guide marks on the piece of paper. And you can see how that shutter piece is going to line up exactly with those. So those guide marks are giving you the perfect placement for these shutter pieces so you don't even have to think about where they're going to go or measure anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some tape on both of those tabs, on the top of each of the tabs. I'm using some double sided tape here, but you could also use tape runner. This is just nice and easy to see. So we're going to peel up that liner paper and then we're going to take that end of the shutter piece, the tab part, and line it up with those guide marks and push it right into the crease there. So it's going to go right into that crease and then all you have to do is fold over that part of the card and it's going to pick up the adhesive, perfectly placing your shutter piece. Now we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So we're going to peel up our liner paper and then we're going to take our shutter piece lining up the tab with those guide marks on our card base that the die created for us. We're going to butt that piece right up into the crease of the card and then we're going to fold down that side of the card and that's going to pick up that shutter piece. Next, we're going to add some tape to the top and bottom tabs. So we're going to fold the tab in and then add tape to it. So the tape is going to the back side of that tab. And this is where we're going to be attaching that circle piece we created earlier. Next, we're going to place the shutter pieces and all you have to do is fold them in towards the center of the card. And the only thing special about this is you want to make sure that if the left piece is on top, like it is here, you want the left piece underneath at the bottom. So we've got a freeze frame here. So on top, you can see the left one is laying on top and under the bottom, the left one is laying underneath the one on the right. So that's all you need to do. It doesn't matter which one you can flip them either, which way you're going to see me flip them in a second. You just want them to be opposite of each other. So here you'll see, I'm going to kind of open them up again and do it in the other direction. And that's totally fine. They're just opposite of each other. And then they're going to fold into each other in a really nice way. Now that the shutter pieces are in proper placement, we can remove the liner paper on the top and bottom tabs and we can attach that really awesome circle window piece. You'll see there I made sure that my shutter pieces were still overlapping each other in that opposite way where the top was the opposite from the bottom. And then we can go ahead and attach our piece to those tabs where we had removed the liner paper on the adhesive. So now that piece is held perfectly in place and our shutter card mechanism is done. So it's super, super easy. Once you do it once, you could do a million of these. And you'll see we open the card and it's going to reveal to something on the inside. And I just love the look of that little window. This die also has this great stitched rectangle that is a decorative piece for the panel. So it's perfectly sized for those outside panels. And I love cutting these from pattern paper. You can see how nice they look there. And then the last part of this card is creating the band that holds the card together. So there's a die included in the set that is a rectangle that has two score lines on it. You're going to die cut that twice and we're going to fold along the center score line of both pieces. Now we're only going to fold along that center score line. The score line on the outside edge that creates that little kind of tab area, that's where you're going to put your adhesive. So we're going to put adhesive to the right of that little score line the die created and we're going to attach these two pieces together so that they're one long piece piece. Then we can go ahead and fold along those lines that we just folded there and we're going to attach the pieces on the other side. So once again, we're going to take our tape runner and we're going to put it to the side of that score line. So just to the right of that score line. And now that's going to attach it and create our band that has that beautiful stitch detail on it. 
then we can take that band and slide it right over the card and this is going to hold it shut and just give it a really nice kind of finished look a really nice thing for the recipient to kind of slip it off and then see the surprise on the inside now remember that stitch circle that was cut when we cut our window? It's a perfect size for putting on this band. So I like to put it so that I cover up the seam. And then here I'm just adding that cute little star that's included in this die set too. And then here is a look at the card in action. So you just slip off that band and then as you open it up, you can see that really cute window surprise. I really like using these for scenes and kind of integrating it into those scenes, but you can also use it to have your sentiment be on the inside or a special message. So there's so many cool things you can do with it. Now here we're going to go over making this card again, but this time with that add-on die. So we fold it along the score lines of the both the panels on the left and right and the tabs on the top and bottom. We're going to take our little shutter card pieces and we're going to fold along those score lines too. We'll add some tape runner to those tabs that we just created, and then we can insert our shutter pieces into the card. So we're gonna line them up with those little guidelines the die created for us. We're gonna butt it right up into the crease of that fold, and then we can press down that panel, picking up the adhesive, and repeating the same thing on the right side. So we're just gonna put it right up to those guide marks and fold down, and now they're in perfect placement. We're gonna fold them into the center of the card and then we're gonna make sure that they're opposite of each other. So the left one was on top on the top part and on the bottom, the right one was on top. Now here, we've used that add-on die. So the add-on die die cuts a stitched rectangle piece with a stitched circle in it. So it's just one pass through the die cut machine. Versus remember before when we trimmed the whole piece down and we used that guide in the circle? So the add-on just makes it nice and quick and easy. So you can just run it through one time, then we can add adhesive to those top and bottom tabs, and then layer that piece right on. So it's just a little bit quicker and easier, and it's got that really, really pretty stitching detail. So here here you can see how quickly I was able to put together one of these cards. It's so quick and easy and I love that because they'd be really great to mass produce, especially for something like holiday cards or thank you cards. And then here I just wanted to show you a comparison between the two ones that we made. So here's the one where we trimmed it down and used the guide and then the one on the left is the one where we used the add-on die. Now next up, Shari is gonna show you how to make two absolutely gorgeous cards with the shutter card die, and I can't wait to see her create them myself. So take it away, Shari. Hello everyone, like Kelly said, I am gonna be showing you how I made two different shutter cards today. And I'm gonna start off with the holiday card that I created because it's nice and simple and uses some beautiful pattern paper. So I'm using some paper from the Let It Shine collection along with some raspberry cardstock. And I'm gonna use the large 12 by 12 sheet of this till sprinkle paper to create my actual card base. This way I have pattern on both sides of the card. So I'm going to cut it with the part of the paper that I want to be the inside up. So that's because I want to make sure that those little guides that it creates for the shutter pieces are on the inside of my card. So the inside of my card, I'm going to want to be this dark teal with the little white dots. And then the outside is going to be the stripes. I'm going to be using the pink with the little dots from the Let It Shine Petite Paper Pack. So it's the same dots, but just on a smaller scale. And those are going to be my little flag shaped shutter pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and use the die to cut out those two little flag shapes. And then for this particular card, I'm actually going to be using the add-on to cut out the panel that goes on the inside. And that I'm going to be cutting from some raspberry cardstock. I'm going to be white embossing my sentiment onto that panel, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm using my Misty to make sure everything's lined up correctly. I'm going to use my anti-static tool to make sure that my embossing powder only sticks to where my embossing ink is. So I've got the second part of my sentiment lined up on my door of my misty there and i'm just going to ink that up with some clear embossing ink then i'm going to add my white embossing powder to that and heat it up till it's nice and melted Now you could go ahead and stamp both lines of this sentiment at the same time, but I wanted the two lines to be a little closer to each other, so that's why I'm doing it separately. 
And I also want to go ahead and heat that up so that I don't accidentally knock off any of that embossing powder. So now I have the second part of my sentiment lined up on the Misty right above it. So this is going to say, have a very cozy Christmas, which I think is just adorable. So I'm going to add that embossing powder to it just like before. And I'll heat that up with my heat tool till everything's nice and melted. Now I can work on assembling my card a little bit here. So I'm just making sure that's nice and straight and not too warped from the embossing. I'm gonna go ahead and fold the little tabs at the top and the bottom in towards the inside. I'm gonna use my bone folder to make sure that those folds are nice and sharp. And then I can do the same with the sides. I'm just gonna fold them in towards the middle. So you can see how this is going to create a nice striped pattern on the outside of my card. So when you use a piece of pattern paper like this, you get the added advantage of it both decorating the inside and the outside all at the same time. Now I can open up my card and I can work on the little shutter pieces. So you want to take those pink shutter pieces there and I'm just going to fold the tab on those as well right along the score line that the die creates using my bone folder and make sure they're nice and crisp. So now I can take my double-sided tape, or you could also use a tape runner. I'm putting a little piece of tape on each of the tabs of the pink shutter pieces, and then I'm going to do the same on these tabs that I folded on the inside of the card on the top and the bottom. So now I can pull off that liner tape paper and I'm going to line up the shutter right on the inside of the card. My score marks are a little hard to see on camera, but I'm just going to make sure I'm nice and lined up right in that crease and then I can fold over the front of the card and pick up that adhesive and you can see that that shutter is in the perfect placement. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the one on the right. Lining that up with those little score marks and guides that it creates right in the crease. And then I can just fold it over and pick it up. Now I want to make sure that the top and the bottom are different as far as which one is on top and which one is underneath. You can see that I have them both varied there. And now I can pull off that liner paper and apply my front panel that I created. So you can see how this card is going to close perfectly. Now to decorate my card, I'm using some images from the new Den Sweet Den, as well as the Christmas tree from Christmas Dreams, and then the little Santa with the reindeer from the Snow Globe set. I've went ahead and colored all my pieces and cut them out. And I'm going to start by adding the Christmas tree right in the center. I'm going to put him really low because Santa and the reindeer are going to fly over him when this window opens. Now I love these sweet little bears from Den Sweet Den and I really love this one that's sleeping. So I thought it would be cute for him to fall asleep under the Christmas tree while these little guys are waiting for Santa. This one is a lot more productive. He's going to be decorating the tree. But of course he needs some books to stand on to reach those ornaments towards the top. So I'm just tucking those books behind the tree because I didn't want to cover up the tree too much. And then he's going to sit on top. So there's the inside, super simple, just with those images. And now we can finish up by decorating the outside. So I'm using the leftover piece of that pattern paper from cutting the card base and also the leftover from my shutters that I cut and I'm cutting the panels that go on the front of the card. 
So we're going to have that contrast of the teal with the little dots and then that stripe behind it. And then I cut the belly band pieces from that pink, that's leftover pink. And I'm going to fold those along that score line. Add a little bit of tape runner to the end on the right side of that other score line and then just line these two up. Now I'm going to wrap it around. So I'm just going to add some more adhesive to that other end and I went ahead and wrapped it around and just laid these over. That way I know it fits nice and perfect. So now to make the circle on the front. So I used that circle die that cut out our hole that comes with the normal shutter card die set. But then I also have a scallop circle tag. So this is a new die that cuts a tag, but that scallop circle actually fits perfectly behind the stitch circle from the shutter die. So it covers up that little hole that's created for the tag perfectly, and they layer together and make a little frame, and then I'm just going to add that to that belly band that goes around the card. And then finally, I'm just going to decorate that circle with the little Den Sweet Den picture frame from the Den Sweet Den set. And then here is that finished card. So you slide that band off and open it up and you see Santa flying through the sky as those little bears wait for him to come and deliver presents. I just think this is adorable. And a super simple card to make. Now I'm going to make a card that has an ink blended background. This card was inspired by Megan's colors that she used on her shutter card. And I'm cutting the card base from some smooth Bristol cardstock. And I'm going to be doing lots of ink blending on this. You want to make sure that you're ink blending on this side that's going to be the inside. And of course that is the side of the die cut that has the little guides for the shutter pieces. So I'm using three colors of Distress Ink to create this beautiful background that was inspired by Megan. And I'm starting with Squeezed Lemonade. And this is going to be at the very bottom of my scene that I'm going to create inside this card. Then I'm going to use some Picked Raspberry for the top. And then I'm going to go in with some Dried Marigold to go between and blend out all those colors together to create a beautiful sunset sky. So I'm just going back and forth between my three colors until I get the look that I want, building up that ink onto that Bristol cardstock. Now I'm going to do some stenciling along the bottom to create some grass. So I'm going to use an oxide ink to do this so that you don't see the color through it. And I'm using my grass stencil. And I'm just going to apply this pretty heavy handed so that it covers up that yellow. Now this stencil doesn't go the whole length, but it doesn't matter because what's in the center is going to get covered up. So you can see how I'm stopping my ink before I get to the other side of that tab. So whatever is where the tab is, is going to get covered up by that panel in the center anyways. So you just really want to focus that you have the two side panels covered and all the way to the tab. That's the part that you're going to see. And then finally on my background, I'm going to add some flecks of gold metallic watercolor. And I just love the look that this gave to that sunset sky. It almost looks like gold foil and adds lots of shimmer and shine to that background. Once I have it looking the way I want it, I will hit this with my heat tool and make sure everything is nice and dry before gluing anything down to that background. You want to make sure that it's nice and dry so everything sticks. For this one, I'm not using the add-on, so I'm going to create a panel just like Kelly did earlier, only I'm very conservative with my paper. <laughs> so I only cut the center of that shutter card. I was using a smaller scrap, but you can see there that this is all you really need to cut that center panel. So you're going to cut off the sides lined up with that tab, 
and then you're going to cut off the tabs. So this is going to create that panel that's the correct size to go in the center of this shutter card. Then I'm going to use the guide that comes in this set, which is that little guide that you snug up to that right top corner. So you line up the right side and the top. And that's going to show me where to put my circle. And I'm actually just going to hold that in place with a little piece of tape. Just so it doesn't shift around. I'm going to take that stitch circle that comes in the shutter die set. And I'm going to line it up with the bottom of that guide. And then I'll just hold that in place with a little piece of tape and run it through my die cut machine. So I want to be sure to remove the guide before I run it through because it will make an impression if you forget. But now I have my circle cut in the perfect place. So for these pieces, I'm going to decorate them like they are a tree. So I'm going to use the wood grain backdrop stamp. You can see mine is well loved. And I'm going to use the walnut ink. So I'm just going to ink that up, stamp that down on this panel, long ways like it's a tree. It's a little wider than my stamp, but this one is really easy to line up those wood grain lines and just continue that pattern on across. I'm going to do the same thing for those shutter pieces, but I'm going to do them in the other direction. So they're going horizontal, but I want that wood grain to be in the same direction as the tree trunk so that it all looks like one continuous tree. I'm not too worried about those little points that didn't get stamped there because you don't see those once they're hidden behind the circle. So I don't need to concern myself too much with continuing my wood grain pattern across these. It fills it up just enough and those little tiny points at the end aren't going to be seen. Now I'm going to add a little bit of Distress Ink to these just to kind of darken them up and give them a little variation to look more tree-like. So I'm going in with some tea dye Distress Ink and my blending brush and just adding a little bit of that to those edges. I'm going to do that to both shutter pieces and I'm also going to do that to that panel that goes down the center. And I'm also going to use a little bit of Vintage Photo, which is a bit darker, just to give even more variation in the color and darken up just a few spots. So before I glue this down, I actually want my grass to continue off across this panel. So I've just got it laid here in the center where it's going to be. I've got my post-it note tape on the back there, and then I'm just lining it up so it's the same height as the grass on both sides. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did on the card base and I'm going to add some Lucky Clover Distress Oxide ink right on that stencil and create grass right along the bottom of this tree trunk. Now I'm laying this on pretty thick and a good way so you don't see that stamping behind it is to pounce that foam on there and get a nice layer of ink. I'm going to do my sentiment here again before I assemble my card. So I put my anti-static powder at the top. Again, I'm white embossing the sentiment onto this tree trunk. So I'm going to get out my white embossing powder here and have it ready. Making sure it doesn't stick because since I did some inking, I want to make sure it's dry. So that was a good test to make sure that that embossing powder isn't sticking. And now I'm going to ink up my sentiment with some clear embossing ink. So I'm just going to stamp that down in the center above the hole and I'll just add that white embossing powder to it. Make sure it is all nice and coated and then I'll just heat that up with my heat tool.
So once that's all nice and melted and bright white, I just love how that sentiment pops off of that wood grain. I can start to assemble my card. So I'm going to go ahead and do my folding. So I folded in that top and that bottom tab, and then I'm going to fold in the sides of my card. And don't worry, we're going to decorate these bright white pieces here that are on the front, but I'm going to decorate it in a slightly different way. So you'll see that here in just a little bit. But for now, we're going to fold in the two sides. Make sure those folds are nice and creased using the bone folder there. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold in the flaps on my little shutter pieces as well. And then I'll add some double sided tape to all those tabs. So now that I've got that tape on all these little tabs, I can start to assemble my card. I will tell you one thing on this. I inked my background upside down. So I had to <laughs> run it through my die cut, line up my die again, and make sure that I got those guides in the right place. So actually, that's what I'm doing with my pencil, is I'm going to mark them so that I use the right ones. So there's my little tip. If you are running this through, make sure that the top is at the top and the bottom is at the bottom since the shutter is oriented towards one side. It's not centered between the top and the bottom. So now that I know which guides to use because I have it oriented correctly now, I'm just lining up those little tabs with those guides and then I'll just close over the side and pick up that shutter piece. This was the first card I made guys, so this was a little bit of a learning. So now I'm going to line up my panel on that top tab. It was just easier for me to see by doing it this way, by opening it up. And then I can peel off that bottom and just flip it over and stick it onto that tab. Now, I have my shutters wrong. Again, this was the first card I made, so I did have to fix those because they didn't exactly work correctly. I mean, they work, but they don't look pretty. So remember Kelly's tip about making sure that if the left one is on top, on top, make sure the left one is on the bottom, on the bottom. So these are the panels for the front and what I did was I cut another card base and I just cut off those two panels on the side so that they're the right size to layer perfectly on the front of my card. I went ahead and stamped those with the wood grain. I went ahead and added the tea dye and the vintage photo distressing just like I did with the tree that I created on the inside. And then now I have them taped together with piece of post-it note tape and I'm going to do that same grass inking. And I tape them together so that when they're closed, this grass is continuous across the whole front and there's no break between them. So it looks like one piece of grass. So I'm going in with that Lucky Clover Distress Oxide just as I did before on that piece that goes on the inside of the card and I'm inking up that grass. And then of course when I pull that stencil up you can see that grass is nice and continuous across the front. So once that ink down there is dry I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to layer them right onto those front panels that close on the front of the card. So you can see since I used the die these are exactly the same size. And I'm not wrapping the whole card because then I don't have to worry about where the fold is. Because when you layer multiple pieces of cardstock across a fold, sometimes it's hard for it to open and close. So I thought this was a good way to reduce the bulk on those hinges and just decorate the front of the card. So now I can start decorating with all my images. I have this sweet little sleeping squirrel sleeping on a bed of leaves from the Let's Go Nuts stamp set. And he's what's going to go inside the opening of this tree that I've created with the shutter mechanism. So I'm just going to go ahead and put him inside there. And then I've got some 
mushrooms and some more squirrels. The mushrooms are from the O oh Gnome stamp set. And I like this big, wide, short one, and I thought it was super cute for a squirrel to sit on top of. It's almost like this little guy is trying to wake up his friend that's sleeping in the tree. And then I'm going to decorate the side panels with those mushrooms as well. And I'm just adding liquid glue to everything so it's nice and flat. And then that cute little baby squirrel, I like that he sort of fits underneath this mushroom, which is super cute. And then I'm using a couple more mushrooms to kind of continue that theme to the front of the card. And then I have this little guy here. And I'm going to use this speech bubble that is also from Onome. And he's obviously thinking about acorns. So now I'm going to work on that band that goes on the outside of the card and I've cut it from the same Bristol cardstock that the card base is cut from and I'm doing some inking with the same colors. So I'm just using two colors here. I'm using the dried marigold and the picked raspberry because there's not really enough space on this to use all three. But I'm going to go back and forth and make sure that line is nice and blended out. And I kind of like the look of this sort of two-toned band that's going to wrap around, that's going to match the inside of the card. So I'm also going to add the gold flecks of paint to this so it also matches the inside of the card in the same way. And then I'm going to assemble it. So I inked those up with them not attached to each other because I didn't want a white line between them, so I just inked them separately. I taped them together so that my line would be even. But now I'm going to use that double-sided tape and attach these two together. And I actually folded it on that score line, which I was not supposed to do. Again, this is learning. I didn't have Kelly's video to tell me what to do the first time, like you guys do. And then I can just close it and finish off that little band there. So yes, mine has a fold in the front and the back, which is kind of strange and not what you're supposed to do. So learn from this and don't do that. And then I'm going to use the circle. Now this is not the circle that I cut from the panel on the inside, but it is cut with that same circle. I just didn't want more brown on the front. I wanted this cream color. So I'm going to add that over the fold of that band. And then to decorate my circle, I'm adding that big acorn and the little leaf to accent the top. So now this card is almost finished. Add a little bit of glitter to the cap of the acorn just to add more shine and also to the leaf. So now he shines just like the band that he's on. And now we're all done. So you can just slide that band off and open it up to this sweet little scene inside. Now let's take a look at some examples from the design team. First is Megan's card that inspired my squirrel card that I made today. I love the pattern paper that she used on the front and then you open it up to that beautifully ink blended background. I just love all the leaves and all those squirrels running around that tree that she created. It's so cute. Grace created a fun card with some of the Into the Woods paper. I love that little squirrel and that hello on the tag on the front. And then she was super clever and flipped her shutter card to where the shutter was at the bottom and used it to create a message inside of the jar.
Audrey created a super sweet holiday card. I love the pink and the red colors and I love that snowflake behind that seal on the front. And then inside is a sweet little gingerbread man in a gingerbread house. And I just love all her snowflakes and that tree border along the bottom. Lynette created a fun Halloween card using a sentiment across the front on that belly band. That's a really clever way to use those line border dies. And then the inside is filled with all those fun foxes dressed up for Halloween. And her sentiment is right in that shutter card revealing the surprise. Elise has another sweet holiday card and she used the new Snowflake Trio stencil to decorate her cardstock and it is so beautiful. She also used the new holographic papers to cut out those snowflakes and I just love this classic look that she created. Elena used stenciling on the front of her card and that cute little squirrel. You open up the card to reveal an acorn house and I just love how she used that acorn house paired with that shutter card cutout to create a fun opening so we can see inside the squirrel's little house. Maureen was very clever in the front of her card creating a full card front by using a whole sheet of paper. You can see when that opens up that it's just attached to one side and you have that pattern paper on the inside but it gives a really cool different look to this shutter card. I love those sweet squirrels playing with the pumpkins and I love her sunflowers with those crows. Here's another holiday card from Megan, and I love that cute little bear popping out from behind those presents on the front. You open it up to reveal a whole bear family getting ready for Christmas on the inside, and I just love all the details that she added to this card. And finally, Mindy also used some pattern papers to create her card. So you have that wood grain on the outside, and you open it up to that bright orange on the inside with those sweet little bears reading books by the lamplight. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.